Hello and welcome to yet another video. You'll have to excuse my voice, I have caught my wife's cold. <laughs> and uh, if you watched the previous video, it was a time lapse of me uh, building my lithium ion battery uh, cell simulator here. It's um, fairly simple. It, uh, I have uh, two little um, two MOSFETs here switching 12 volts uh, back and forth on the coil here. These are located on the DMOC adapter, which is uh, back there and plugged in. You can see this gray cable coming across over here, and that plugs in right here, and that goes into the primary on this uh, transformer. And then I have um, four secondaries. Each one has its own little bridge rectifier. And um, so we're putting about, we're getting about 12 volts here. Each one of these generates about, uh, I got some diode losses in there, so it's about 10 volts or so for each of these. Uh, I got uh, a little bit of bulk capacitance, uh, LM317 adjustable voltage regulator. Um, I have a bunch of 20 turn 100 ohm pots, so I used those and then scaled my resistors accordingly to get uh, 2 volts to 4.6 volts out to cover the uh, lithium ion battery range. That lets me drop the voltage really low or go really high to see how the um, system reacts to that, how the BMS reacts to it, what packets get sent and everything. Um, I've replaced uh, cells 96, 95, 94, 93 in this uh, battery pack and the reason I went with that is pretty simple. They are the, um, let's see if this will focus. Maybe. Anyways, um, cells 96, 95, 94, and 93 are at ground potential. So this is the, um, you see the negative. So we don't want to be all the way up here at the positive side, right? These would be a, a really high potential. So we're doing everything down here at ground where it's nice and safe. Um, I use the information. Once I knew I wanted these cells, I backtracked these uh, connector numbers through system and you go through this um, uh, right hand front module stack intermediate battery connector here and then I've marked which ones I needed and then those wires come over to here which is the smaller connector that plugs into the battery management system on the side here and uh, once I had those numbers and I of course went and that's what these are and found which wires I needed so I've got the yellow red wire it's the yellow with the red stripe, green with the yellow stripe, blue with the black stripe, brown with the white stripe, and green with the red stripe. Um, this wire and this wire are still intact. Uh, I, cl I cut these three, and that's where I spliced in my, uh, at these three points here. I have a one ohm resistor in here so that I can hook up my meter across that and see if it's trying to balance them or not, so if I turn the voltage up really high on here, I should expect um, this guy to start passing. Well, it'll put a 10 milliamp load on here, so I should see 10 millivolts there. Theoretically, we'll see what happens. Um, but the main thing is I'll be able to adjust the uh, voltages and then be able to see changes in the serial data. I am still sniffing it, uh, and we're still getting can packets across, so here's the... Uh, Current voltage, I uh, adjusted them to be within reason, so they're all around 4 volts. And then, uh, here, just to show you that it does actually, in fact, oh, you know what, I forgot. Um, <laughs> one, one important thing. Um, if you watched one of the previous videos, I got a, a different BMS. This is from a 2010. This older one, I had to modify some of the connectors to get it to work with this. I am actually using my BMS, but one of the things it came with was another wiring harness. So that's the one I modified. I didn't cut up the wiring harness that's built in. So you can see, um, maybe this angle will be better. You can see that there's still the two connectors down there are from the existing harness from the battery pack. And this harness is one that I added and then it comes across over here. And I went ahead and unplugged the battery pack from the existing harness the two sides and then I spliced in. This is mine, or the, the harness that came with the other BMS and I cut it all up <laughs> to get to the uh, wires. And it goes over this ribbon cable here and then that comes back to this guy. So that's the ribbon cable coming in here. So that allows me to get in the system. So we are legitimately replacing um, 
those four cells in the uh, in the unit. And then now we'll be able to go ahead and uh, change the voltages. And I'll do that real quick here to show you. So uh, let's see. Let's go change cell number uh, 96, which is currently sitting at 4.004. I'm going to lower its voltage. So just come over here. This is uh, labeled these 93, 94, 95, 96. So we'll go ahead and uh, going to be kind of hard to do with the uh, with the phone in hand, but let's just turn that a bit. And you'll see that cell number 96 has now dropped to 3.96 volts. It'll focus. Focus. There you go. So that's 3.96 volts instead of 4. Point whatever it was before. So yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and start playing with that and get some packet captures and see what uh, that will allow me to figure out the um, how the, uh, the packet structure is and allows me to reverse engineer that. And then uh, once we get that, I'm going to start playing with it to see what it takes to get the... Uh, I need to know what the command, serial command that comes across to enable the balancing resistors, the shunts to enable them. And hopefully I get enough information. I can turn these cells up really high. And then like if I set them to be the highest cells, it should start balancing it. But I might have to come in here and fake out the current sense to make it think that the pack is actually actually charging. Uh, I don't know yet. I don't know if it actively balances all the time while it's powered up or not. But that's what we're going to find out. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching.